Good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Florida Gators National Signing Day. Steven Chad, welcome, my Shelton boy. Shelton Walker. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. It is good to see you. It is like Christmas in college football right now. Yes, my sir. gosh. It is a it's a big day. It was a big day. It's coming to a, to an end. But we had we had some good news. We had a fun day. It was an exciting day. I think we've got some 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 happy Florida fans. We've got some upset Florida fans. We're going to get into all that today. We're going to get into who we signed, who we missed out on, the drama, who's pissed off, who's not pissed off. It, it's going to be a good show. We've got some other stuff, Texas a and news. We've got Georgia news. We've got Jim Harbaugh news. It was a, a mayhem kind of day. It, look, it, I thought it wasn't going to be as exciting with, with all the NIL money and people signing and not signing, signing early and being able to sign later. It wasn't. It's not like it used to be, but I, I think it's still – it held up, and it was definitely a fun one to, to say the least. Look, look there's, a, there's an early signing period now. It does take a little bit of the luster off of what – I just referenced used to be like Christmas Day for all of the college football fans out there. My goodness, it's you know you would come in, you would see National Signing Day. The fax machines would get hot sometime around 8:30. They would start spinning. Kids were having their press conferences in their gymnasiums. There was all this intrigue going on all day long, and my goodness, it, it, you, there were just surprises and shocks, and it, it was it was just this one massive. Mm -hmm just unbelievable day all wrapped into one it's a little bit different now with the with the first signing period Social media. but today did not let us down not, not at all i i enjoyed it um muddy waters uh always always a clutch let's get him in really quick let's see what he says here uh man today was disappointing but i'm excited about the future now we wait for boarding him to make his decision look let's let's get into it that's a great segue into getting this show started today was it a little disappointing? Yes, because there was a lot of hype on the what ifs, right? Are we going to get Harold Perkins? Is Jacoby Matthews in, in, in the mix? Is Gervonta Citizen in the mix? All of these names were, were getting hot. We got the crystal ball that that Gervonta was coming, right? I mean, Gator Nation was going absolutely berserk when we had all this news going around. So I get it. I can see why because expectations were set really high. They got built really quick. And it didn't really hit what we really, really wanted. But if we look at where we started... At the beginning of the Napier era, let's say. We were sitting at 75th, 76th ranked, I think, or something like that overall. Yeah, we it finished, was low. It was we low. finished today 17th. Absolutely yeah. incredible. One hell of Amazing. a comeback. Amazing. Yeah, you, you've definitely transitioned from a coach who who values recruiting and understands what it what it's like to find these kids in their high school environment and have come through their development versus a coach where you started with Mullen, who really just felt like he was going to try to play uh, like like the the free agent period uh, and the transfer portal were the same thing and, and put less emphasis on recruiting. Uh, but look, man, Billy did one hell of a job, and I'm not here to give the guy any credit. That's obviously the last thing that I want to do, <laughs> but my goodness – uh, to start from where you were with uh, with Mullen to where you finished with Billy is one hell of a run. Hey, uh, real quick before I, I, I almost forgot. Scared money don't make money, you know. <laughs> I got that name here, hoodie baby. Let's get it. <laughs> we had to, we had to get it on there real quick. So we got Ant thirty three, and, and this is a great kind of how we want to get this, this show started. He said we only landed two of our six targets, and I think that's where people are getting frustrated and where the the upset is coming from so let, let's let me let me be clear on what we landed uh, a lot of people i think aren't counting a few that we that we landed that i'm, I'm going to count as a land for today that i think we're pretty much already verbally committed um the, the first being uh jalen farmer who is a an offensive lineman he's a three-star recruit he was already verbally committed to florida seemed pretty heavy but bama and kentucky which i mean kentucky wasn't really a threat, but bama made a huge push for this kid and to me that's a huge W for us to be able to hold off Bama. Now, again, three-star recruit, they can argue like he probably wasn't going to play there anyways. But we, 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 we see that playing only one year in Bama has has its, has its success. So sure. I think being able to hold off Bama and to get this kid to sign was a mass – was he a target, say, like 
who he wanted. No, he wasn't really on the radar of targets of those big star guys. But, dude, the guy, the guy, listen to this. He's 6'5", 325 pounds. Okay? <laughs> There's no, no slouch by any means. The reason why he's three stars, he ate the other one. All right? <laughs> Look, the guy's an absolute tank, my guy. Look, at the, at the end of the day, you can't have an entire team of five stars. Look, I know it feels unless, like Bama has Texas done that. A&M. <laughs> and well, we'll get to that. But look, you can't have an entire team of five stars. The the portal won't allow you to do it anymore. They'll be gone. Um, look, you've sure, got to have sure. your three star guys. You got to have your two star guys that you can get them into your program, develop them, put them in the weight program, get them in the nutrition program, and make them better. Now, if everybody comes in a five star, everybody comes in ready to 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 think they're going to start. Sure. And at the end of the day, you need these guys for depth, and especially at the offensive line. And I think. Florida Florida can understand that better than anybody, even Florida State, that if you don't have that depth, it's that those two if that position, especially defensive line, offensive line, there's just too too much, too much chaos at, the, at that position to think that if you don't have the depth, he's a great player, no doubt, three stars, but it, who cares about the stars? He's gonna come in, he loves Florida, he wants to play for Florida. Great win. Take it absolutely. Next, next one I'm I'm excited about, and we're gonna play some some highlight tapes here. Is, is Jack Fiburn? Fiburn. Look, I'm horrible with names, guys. I think you guys have learned that uh, that's not gonna get any better here. Um, here's some highlights playing up on the on the screen here. He is a three star. He was a four star, and we'll get into that too about these stars dropping off. We were trying to figure out like what causes this. There's a lot of hate that Florida fan Florida fans are saying that. Uh, Gators, when they commit to the Gators, we lose a star, right? Um, but you and I kind of talked about it a little bit today. Part of it is that they go and do some kind of, you know, some uh, some training or tryouts or kind of like a Columbine for college, right? That's where they can lose that star. Um, so that's, that's that's in Colorado, but yes, yeah, co- the oh, Combine, com- the Combine. So I got a little bit of list by my, my, my wisdom teeth are so effective, but yes, Combine. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is causing some of those stars to drop off a little bit, but he was a three-star edge um, from Bowles, which is here in Jacksonville. We talked about him a few few days ago, just prior to this, about last week sometime, and you, you can see in, the, in these highlights here, the guy is an absolute tank. To me, he's 100% a four-star. The guy's quick, he's fast, he's Hot off the line, and he, he's he's a man amongst boys. His lot in his senior year of high school, he's a wrestler. Uh, the kid is no slouch. So this to me is a, a huge dub, an, an absolute dub. No, I look. I mean, did, you you can't you can't go wrong if you go to Bowles High School. You're playing the best of the best, it, even in Jacksonville. Uh, it's you know we're not we're not South Florida. We're not Muck City. You know, we're not uh, uh, Booker Washington down there. I mean, these guys, those those schools that just, you know, any and every, you know, Hall of Famer that comes from Florida seems to come from there. Uh, but Bowles has produced some talent. There might be a starting quarterback out there in the NFL uh, that uh, that came from there. And I'm, I'm sure I can, I'm missing some folks. I could go down a list, but uh, Bowles produces talent. And they not only just produce talent, but they play talent. They play the Trinities. They, they go out there and they play a high level of, of football they're not it's not a, a situation where you get a kid coming from a school who was playing lower level talent and he just looks like a stud like bowls plays schools on their level and they beat them and they play well to come from that school you That's, know that you've seen some talent yeah and i think a lot of people i mean it, 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 obviously we're, we're, we're located around here with bowls and we understand the talent that bowls produces we mentioned this in the last cast Bowls produce Mac Jones. Like, they're not producing, you know, slouches around there. So, it's not like some kid. Maybe a guy named him. Chipper Jones came from there. I don't know. It just yeah. seems like athletics seems to happen very it, it, well. How The best around. way I can describe it, it was IMG before IMG. Is that is that not a good way of, of looking at it's it, right? It's a great way of saying it. Great it way the, of saying it. The early days of IMG. Like, you would hear about Bowls, and you're like, yeah, there's the, – like, they, they recruited – Right when you weren't allowed to recruit in high school, in high school. Well, sports. they're a private school, a private so yes, school. they would be. Yeah. Able, they would. They would go out and they would get these kids and they would give them athletic scholarships to play sports. And I'm sure that they did it all nice and legal. Look, Let's they, be like, honest. And the IMG never had thing a was perfect. IMG is now kind of has has stapled themselves as a school, just like that. Bulls is a little more old fashioned in the way they operate, but this kid, this he's an absolute stud. For him to be a, a man amongst boys at that kind of school, right, that caliber of school, it, it speaks volumes. So. Well I'm absolutely stoked about that. So we got some comments here, uh, real quick. Muddy Waters. When was the last time? And this is what this is where I wanted it to get into the positive. 
right? This is where I think we're missing as Gator fans, where we're missing out on what, what was so great about today. When was the last time Florida was in contention for a multiple five-star on signing day? Been a long time. So I'm glad and expect Florida to be in contention for most five-star recruits in the future. And this is what I was pumped about. This is where we, we, we said, hey, we're two for six out of our targets. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. We had uh, multiple five-star recruits have our hat on their table this afternoon. It's been a long time since that's been even an, a, a thought process. So to me, that alone was a W for, the, for the, that, that name to be in the argument. Texas A&M made history today, and we'll get into that a little bit later on. So that has a huge factor into it, right? And you can't ever sleep on LSU. They're always going to do great with Brian Kelly there. They're a big school. They do a lot of great things. They re- they've, they've won the most recent, right, outside of Bama. But let me say who we were really competing with today. Lost a few to Miami, which, again, we'll get into that too. We're going to talk about Harold Perkins, Javante, and all that. I want to talk about the good stuff first, and then we'll get into the drama and the juice. But this is a huge – this is a great point, and I'm glad you brought it up, Muddy Waters, because this was something that I wanted to talk about and that we're not keep focusing on. Is like, look, it's the fact that we had the opportunity today. And that sounds like a losing mentality, but where we were, <laughs> right? There was no opportunity to be had. Yeah, there exactly. was no opportunity to be had. You weren't even knocking on the door of a lot of the kids. Like I mean, when I say that, I'm, 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 I mean, you weren't even contacting them. You weren't knocking on the door for a lot of these kids that that at this point are now signed uh, national letters of intent uh, to play for your university and to uh, to have seen what Billy did. Look, and, and the other thing is what he did with his inroads uh, in Louisiana. Uh, being a head coach there, uh, even some of the lineage that he had uh, in Alabama when he was an assistant coach there and things like that, he was able to maintain those relationships so well that, you know, you get somebody like an ETN that comes in. You get you do, you do just get some guys who they don't forget him. He, they didn't forget who the guy was that, that maintained this relationship. And high school coaches have a massive massive impact on the decision that these kids are going to make and for him to come in this far behind with from and take over from a coach that was really going to use the transfer portal to plug and play and get you know whatever uh, players he needed because he's not the guy uh, Mullen that had the personality to build those relationships right so for him to come in and and use uh just the relationships he's built and the fact that he he you know, had some inroads and maintain them. It's it's pretty astounding. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes you get a sure. school with a new coach that just gets traction because there's excitement. Sure. But this one did. This one had a little bit of that, but it felt more like these the kids that he got were there because they knew him, and he had been almost recruiting him. He just couldn't get in the door at Louisiana Monroe. Sure, they, he can now. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with that. Like you said, that the the new the nuances of a new coach can sometimes just be like there's a lot of excitement going on, and not a lot not a lot comes from it, but there's a lot of you know fluff in the air. This there there was definitely some traction here, and definitely some movement in the right direction. Um, the, the next big one that we signed again, we signed Trevor, um, which he was already going to be a, a big a big sign. We knew that, but there was some speculations, and people were coming out thinking he was going to leave because of the Trevante Citizen situation. And we have a deep running back room. I didn't feel that way. Obviously, it didn't turn out that way. Um, but Caleb Douglas, he, look, again, things keep changing. Last I saw, he was four-star, but now he's saying he's a three-star wide receiver. It's also in film on this guy. This guy is a freaking uh, gazelle. I mean, he's long, he's lengthy, he's fast. His top-end speed when he gets on plane, dude, is stupid. Uh, when he get when he gets going, so yeah, but you got to be careful. I mean, if you got a quarterback throwing bullets, he could take one, and that. That's, you know, yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'm watching well, the kids' highlights, and I'm watching him obviously make some great catches and some and some make sure running reg- great routes. But the whoever was throwing to him, bro, <laughs> no slouch by any stretch. Of Where him. is that kid? Yeah, bro, how's that throw, guy not gone already? <laughs> throwing absolute darts, bro. I was like, yo, y'all sleep. Maybe it was is it the quarterback or is it Caleb? Is it the chicken the egg? Like, who came first? Because my man <laughs> is throwing absolute pocket passes to this kid. Like I was like, holy shit. Um, but again, he had some uh, running out of running out of the bubble screens and some and some um, some quick, quick passes. The guy looked looked clean, looked fast. We did lose out on um, to TCU. I think it was DJ Allen. Everyone's upset about that. Yeah, DJ Allen to TCU. That was a hard loss to me. That was because our wide receiver room is a little bit not where I would like it to be. That to me, I feel like was the biggest L of the day is losing that opportunity. The rest of the stuff was more of kind of like a hope and and hoping we get there. Um, but that one to me kind of that one hurt a little bit more for sure. 
Yeah, and, and again, and you, you felt like as you got momentum going into uh, today, it just felt like, man, we got a shot at everybody. And it's some of them, you just started to see some traction. You know, you're looking at their social media. They're dropping these little hints on any, you know, these small little sure. things can be like, that's, I mean, he's talking about us. He's talking about us. So the, I, I see it, you know, from a position standpoint, you certainly didn't want to lose the guy. Um, but you know, again, I'll let, let's focus on the positive. That was a, that was a hell of a run. Sure. Absolutely. And again, we got Ant 33 and we're going to move on to this now is we lost Perkins because he wanted to stay in state. Nothing we could have done about that. So Harold Perkins was the big one that we all were excited about. We thought we had an opportunity, um, for a little bit there, got the LSU colors kicking for the kid for a little bit there. He was, there was a lot of talk that he was coming to Florida because his mom was huge on the Gators. <laughs> and we're going to get into that here we, shortly. We got a little um, something for you about this. <laughs> some, some drama came out where, again, I could have played this both ways. I was prepared for if you signed with Florida, we would have been all, all good news. But if you didn't, I had the alternative of like, hey, it's kind of a good thing. Just because that's what we're here for. Um, there was a lot of drama that came out. His mom was on social media prior to him signing talking about his mom, his daddy coming out of the woodworks who hasn't been there, who hasn't supported him. But now that money's involved, here comes his dad. Like, that was her post. Like, those are my, my words. Those are his, her words. So there's obviously a lot, about, a lot of heat, a lot of frustration there. And that's where the LSU started, started to make a pull because the dad involvement in the situation. Where and again, Jackson State started getting some talk, but I didn't, I didn't think Jackson State ever really had a, a true opportunity. Um, but don't count Jackson State out of anything. They're always just for the record. I always want to put looming. that out there. They're always <laughs> looming. Um, but it's to me, it felt like again with the drama that started that this early on, this quickly, and again he dropped to a four star. Not quite sure why. Again, we, we all consider him to be a five star, but. What concerned me was the drama that was already ensuing with with the family. It, it, it's definitely going to have an impact on them. Like I hope it doesn't. I hope the kid has a great career over at LSU. But to me, again, it, it's going to happen. It's starting to become a thing. These like, the kid was walking around with the Texas A and M hat, LSU jump shoots, and Florida slides. I mean, this is their day, right? Like this is their first big moment into their career. So I get it. It's exciting. But there's a lot of drama that was behind it, and I was like, look. Napier doesn't need that in his first year. He's going to come in. It could be this 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 egotistical thing, the situation, right, where we don't have kind of the, the statue. Neither does LSU. I think A&M would have been a better fit for Perkins. But honestly, I think why he didn't go there is that's a huge class. And he's not going to be the guy if he goes to A&M. I think he gets swallowed up. He would have been the guy either at LSU or Florida where it's like, look, this is the dude. But A&M, I don't think he's that guy. And I think that's I he can't be. It's impossible for him to be that guy at A and M after what I just watched them do. But but yeah, to your point, look, I mean, you know, you, you've got uh, you've got the dad that comes out of the woodwork and hasn't been around forever. Mom's not happy about it, right? But you know, the, the dad clearly has uh, an interest, a hard interest in LSU. So and the to mom- Muddy Waters' point here, it, it, there, there might have been a uncle. Uh, Uncle Moneybag involved yeah, for, uh, for Mr. Ellis. Talk. Hey, <laughs> real quick, I had this on the notes and I left it out, but Muddy Waters never seems to fail us. <laughs> <laughs> Our most important back, recruit buddy. started immediately was Trey Smack, the kicker. If Florida had McPherson this past season, Florida probably would beat Bama. This Trey Smack kid, he's a two-star recruit. The guy's a five-star stud. All right, and we I, I talked to you about this pre-cast. <laughs> Bro, Muddy Waters is dialed in. So, is. Trey Trey. Trey Trey Smack's dialed in. Um, so Harold Perkins, you talked about his mom being upset. I I, I wonder if she showed that during signing. Would you think, mm. <laughs> bro? She is hot, my guy. My goodness. The- I mean, that's a motion that you can't hide even oh on your goodness. son's big day. Like, oh, oh this really? is happening. Bro. I watched this and I, I I cringed. I felt so bad for for Mr. Perkins there, for Harold. I mean, dude, come on, mom. Like, what are you, what right right there right now? Like, do this later. You know what I mean? Like, not in the middle of the kids signing. It, it sucks. It sucks to see how like, I get the mom's involvement. I get the parents' involvement. But it's it's also upsetting to see how much. You look, you guys raised them. I get it. But it's they're starting to make their own decisions. So at what point do you kind of separate this and? Don't yeah. allow your emotions to take the best of it. It's it's sad to see, 
but it's hilarious. I'm, look, I'm here for it. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and look, what's what's funny is we talked about this uh, precast that you know the mom. Come on, put it put it back, hold it back, throw a smile on your face, and and then have a conversation with your son later. But this isn't the worst situation <laughs> no, that we've ever seen. Throwback for you, ladies. And we're gentlemen. gonna give you guys a little throwback for anybody is- who's not been a massive signing day fan like me and Shelton are, or Shelton and I. <laughs> this was Jacob Copeland in 2018. As you can see there, he's got three <laughs> hats family. on the table. He's got a Florida hat, an Alabama hat, and a Tennessee hat. His mother sitting right next to him is wearing an Alabama sweatshirt and a Tennessee skull cap. He's even wearing Bama colors. <laughs> she doesn't care which one of the two he picks. But let's move on to the next slide. Sorry. <laughs> and where did mom go? <laughs> mom and grandma. <laughs> gone. Mom and grandma. Gone. Literally, he put the Florida hat on. <laughs> She grabbed her purse. She picked up oh her mother. She walked off the stage. And if you, I don't know if you can back it up or not, but it, it, it is what it is. The guy sitting next to him in the blue shirt was paying no attention to the whole situation <laughs> prior to mom and dad. See, he's like he's on his phone. The guy's on his phone. He's not really paying attention, and, he, and he's I, like, "Oh, I, I, got, I got a clock in. I got, I got to help my man right here. I got this. Got real. Somebody has to step in." And it's just the most Dude. ridiculous thing I've ever seen. They just got up and walked off the stage. It's just on ESPN. <laughs> like, what Awful, dude. Uh, Ham- Hamilton Keener said, is that, is that not just how she acts? I think talking to her Perkins. I hope not. I hope that's not. I mean, it could just be like just how they just her chilling. But I, I think she, she definitely showed a lot of love for Florida. So I, I definitely think she was, she was quite upset. Uh, on on his decision to his I guess his thing was uh, to stay home, so yeah. we had to get the hair up. Look, I'm not upset about it. It is what it is. For the fact that we had the hat on the table again was huge. A lot of drama kind of ensuing with that. And again, the Copeland situation. Copeland played was well for Florida, but there's a lot of mom and daddy drama going on with the money. Look, the NIL money situation. I'm gonna have a quick rant. I I, I told you I wanted to do this. We've talked about it, and it's coming to more and more in fruition on where my frustrations are coming from with. This situation growing up for me, right? When I was growing up, you, you would watch these kids and it was all about playing for the school that you grew up watching, right? You wanted to play for the Florida's, the Florida States, the Miami's like that was your team. That's where I'm going to go. I'm going to sign for four years. I'm going to play. The goal was to make it to the league. That was it. You, you busted your ass. You go to school, you go to class, you play football, you eat, sleep, drink football. You party on the weekends. You're a, a small celebrity around town. Right, but your main thing is football. I got to make it to the league, so I am dialed in. These guys don't have a pot to piss in. They eat the the lunch, the meals that are provided, the three meals that are provided to them a day. They've got the same track suit that that was given to them for free that every, all the football players wear because look, they're college kids. They don't they don't got anything. They're getting bigger. None of their clothes fits anymore. Like that's that's what it was, right? And it was exciting. That's why we woke up Saturday morning because these kids were gr- grinding. They are hungry, and now with where we're headed with with all this money. The fame and, and all that is happening so quickly, and we're losing the pureness and the innocence of being a kid, of simply just being a kid and playing football. And it's it's fun to see. It's exciting, but it's also a little bit like, look, I'm heartbroken a little bit. It's like Tom Brady retiring. We're losing an era. We're losing a time that it will no longer ever exist. And that, it, it sucks to see it. It's something I always say when you graduate college. It's it's it, I would say go to college because once you graduate – there's an innocence that you you will never be able to gain back, and a freedom that you will never get back ever again. There is no amount of money that you could that you can make that gets you the freedom that you have in college, because you're this young kid with the whole world in front of you, with zero responsibilities. You are the ultimate, besides being a child, ultimate amount of freedom that you will ever have. Right? You can make your dumb decisions, your dumb mistakes as a child, but once you go into that big world, things change, and that's where I think that's becoming sooner and sooner. And it just sucks. I think being a kid, a kid is great, and we're, we're losing out on that. That's my rant yeah, for the evening. And, and no, and look, I'm, I'm, you're, I'm, you're not too far off this, right? I think we've talked about this on the cast a few times. There's, uh, there's, there's two signing days now, which just robs the fan. It, does it help the kids? Yes. Does it give them the chance to get rid of the recruiting cycle a little bit early? Yes. But there used to be a point in time where when a kid signed with a school, 
that that was a contract and it didn't matter if the coach left or if the assistant coaches left, but you had to stay. And that meant that no matter what, if you signed with X school, like let's say FSU, you were a null for life. And that term is used amongst former players. If you were a Gator, you were a Gator for life. To transfer was so difficult that you you just you you were buying into and you were giving yourself to the university that you signed with today. And now Look, we've got all of this talk about commitments and what the classes look like and, and just all these different dynamics on what that can do for your roster. And there's no telling if half these guys are there in two years. You know, you've got Texas A&M with, you know, an amazing class, but they can leave tomorrow. They don't even have to enroll. Sure. So it just it takes away the fact that when, you know, you were watching signing day, you say, you know what? That guy is committed to Florida State. That guy is committed to FSU. That guy is going to be committed to, to Miami or whatever school is your school. You knew on signing day that guy committed to the university that you love and watch every Saturday. And you became their biggest fans because they're now a, 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 as big of a fan of the university that you love. Sure. And it was a, it was a it was a symbiotic relationship. It became a family. Yep. And now it feels like hey, we're going to talk about a lot of guys, but I'll, I'll just throw it out there. Uh, you know, FSU has eleven. We have eleven enrollees. Four that signed a letter of intent. There's one commit that didn't sign today, but there's also ten transfers. Sure. We have as many transfers as, as we do commits. enrollees. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah, and it just it just it, it feels weird, and it's it you know it's it's what the it's what the fans kept trying to tell the NCAA when they kept considering all these different changes. Like we're trying to keep the sport pure, and sure. if you'll just hear us out, because we're fans, you're the you're a business. We're the fans of your business. We have watched it and lived it and breathed it and had horrible Saturday nights and don't talk to me on Sunday and the greatest Saturday afternoons and just everything. It, it just, it feels like there's just a little bit of something lost. Absolutely. And, uh, Ant 33, it, it, it is correct. Uh, he said, didn't Copeland transfer to Maryland? And he, and he did just in December. So <laughs> it looks like mom still didn't get her wish. She but, didn't get her way, um, yeah. but I mean, uh, again, it, 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 but it, it just shows. It goes to show you that him committing, right, that big stage, and now it doesn't really have any value to it because he's he's playing in Maryland. So, um, right here. So, oh, Muddy Waters is kind of comment. I used to think commitment meant something until Dalvin Cook and Emran Lane bounced for FSU. And again, that's that's totally true. It's like when you when you said something, it's like, hey, I'm going to play for the school. You throw that hat on, it had some value, it had some meaning to it. I mean, Perkins did it. He threw the Texas A&M hat on, like. I don't know. He was it, committed up until three weeks ago. Yeah, like it's just it's crazy. Not a, yeah, three weeks ago. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah. it's just I don't know. It's a weird time. It's a weird or like you said, it's it's fun to get excited about it. We're excited about it. Um, the, but it doesn't the, mean a lot in the future. Like yeah, the, because there's so much change so now, fast. I'm hoping some rules change here eventually. We'll see. Um, let's let's kind of move on a little bit. Trevante Citizen. This was another big one that Florida wanted. There's a, there's a lot of talk on Trevante, on if we get Trevante, will Trevor Etienne, Etienne leave? Look, we're going to have to work on that, okay? <laughs> Etienne, uh, will, Etienne, Etienne. Etienne, will he leave? Because the running 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 back room is absolutely stacked. So, um, again, stacked in, in, in terms. But he ended up going to Miami, which to me is a W. He's at a conference. More likely, we won't even see the kid. The ACC, to me, is kind of in, in, a, in a weird limbo stage so yeah. uh, to me it's a w for you maybe not so much but i'm glad that he's he he, he didn't go to like an lsu or an a&m or a georgia um look there's a, there's a lot there's a lot of studs back there so i, I get it he, he wants to go play now he wants to play right now and again it just goes back to that that whole situation where we just got, got done ranting about is they have so many options that why wouldn't he go play somewhere where he's going to be able to start right away um, with with sure. Bowman, Lingard, and, and Naquan, I can see why where he's like, look, I'm not going to go sit behind these guys for two years. Now, I think he should have. Yeah. I think he'd be smart, but these kids want to play now, and they want to try to get some NIL money. So 
look, good for him. I'm not too upset about this this transfer. Again, the, there's another. Uh, the only really I'm one of truly upset was a DJ Allen and Jacoby Matthews. Those two would have been huge. I feel like and Jacoby went to Texas A&M, securing, and we'll get into that that number one recruiting class. But Trevante, I wasn't that upset about. Um, it's just kind of look. It, it is what it is. Again, he was one of those six targets that we wanted to get, but I was I was cool with that. Yeah. No. And again, if, if, if you look back at it and you, and you say, you know, there's always going to be misses, especially with what you started with at the beginning of the recruiting season. But my gosh, you know, you, you were going to miss on a couple. There's no way around it. Um, I, I just you, you focus on the positives. And uh, we, we've got Hamilton Keener down here asking a little bit about the Texas A&M class and, and, the, and the ability to, to retain it to to that point, and And we'll definitely talk about the Texas A&M piece. Florida can retain this class. Florida has the ability to keep this class on. And this isn't some something where you've got such a hemorrhage of talent that you don't even know where to house them anymore. So like it, you know, a couple extra guys isn't going to make or break um, what Florida did. Um, but look, I mean, do, you, do you want them? Sure. But does it make the, the running back room maybe crowded? It does and so on and so forth. So we got a comment really quick here um, from Daniel Riviera. He says that uh, Florida Gator Man talks a lot about how Gators are recruiting, but they're last in the SEC. No, we're not. We're ninth in, in recruiting, and overall, I want to say we're even higher than that for this year. So for, for for just the SEC. For overall, we're seventh, and for just recruiting, we're, we're ninth. So we're not last by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I don't know where that was coming from, but – uh, appreciate your appreciate the comment. Um, so again, you you you, you uh, address the Hamilton about Texas A and M class being retained. Yeah, that, I mean, again, to his point, that's a lot of talent to keep from transferring. Talent. You know, maybe that's maybe that's the the new idea. Is I mean, it's always you always want to get all the best players, but you've got to bring in so many good ones. You've got to gotta, cover you've the have to cover the the underscoring losses. And look, you may keep. 95% of the incoming class because it's going to push out the three stars that you recruited two years ago. You know, it's, it's just a vacuum system. I think right now, and there's what's, no penalty for, for transferring. What's, what's funny here is money waters. And I talked to you about this prior dude. Money's got us dialed in. He's, he, he was he here. This is, it's, I got a bug in the room. <laughs> he said, I'll be rooting for A&M until I play Florida. Uh, Walter Nolan, the number one player in the country County played for my old high school and won our first state championship. That's pretty cool. I, okay. I said the exact same thing. I said, look, I am actually excited to see Texas A&M do well, except when they play Florida, of course. I'm a huge Gator fan, but I lo- it's fun to watch other teams do well. The only team that I don't like to see do well is Florida State. And even this year, we talked about in the cast, it was fun to see you guys kind of fight through this weird stage that you're in. And I, I wrote in a, in a past article this past week about Brady is I hated Brady when I was a kid because he beat everybody, right? And the entire world hated Brady except Foxborough. But as we got older, we mature a little bit and we realized, like, look, it's we're witnessing something great here. Why not just enjoy it? We don't have to hate it. We don't have to root for it, but let's appreciate it. And that's Yeah, it wasn't like he was beating our team. (laughs) We we weren't losing AFC championships to the guy. We just got tired of seeing him win. (laughs) Yeah, but at the same time, like, it's incredible, right? And for this to be – and, look, let's pull it up now, uh, the the, the AN logo. This is considered to be the greatest recruiting class of all time. Like, it's cool to witness history like that, and you can't can't knock on it. And there's a video we're going to play here in a little bit because there's some more drama that we're going to get into with Jimbo Fisher – and he goes on this rant about playing for the twelfth man, and I've always loved that the twelfth man, like their their whole uh, their slogan and all that. I think it's awesome. I loved it when Manziel was there. They're a fun school to watch. I've 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 loved watching Manziel. I love any time they beat Bama. They they are a fun school to watch. I think Jimbo is a great personality. He's hilarious. Even when he was at FSU, I thought he was hilarious. He's a dickhead, and I was here for it. I loved every second of it. So I I. Like what, what Muddy said, I am super stoked to watch these kids play, this talented team to play, and give Bama some fuck, give them a fucking run, Jimbo. Go put them bitches on the fucking Let's do back. it. I think, look, I mean, let's be serious. Right now in college football, is there any team that we're sick of seeing win more than Alabama? They're the, they're, they're the exact reason that you said we got sick of Tom Brady. Just won every damn thing, and they oh, won it all the damn time. So I, I'm sick of them. I hate them. I don't care. Like, like Jimbo, I hated you when you left Florida State. I wanted to punch you in your stupid drunk head. 
but my gosh, just get good and slug them right in the mouth. I look, I'm I'm here for it. Uh, we got uh, Ryan Bork says I hate Jimbo and I hope they lose every game he plays. <laughs> uh, At least he's consistent. Yeah, I love, I love it. Look, I, I'm here for it. I'm excited. I think I think I hope they do well. It's gonna be fun to watch them. And again, as a Gator fan, you can knock on me for it. But look, I, I love and I enjoy watching certain teams and certain players and coaches do well. Clemson, I I, I hope Dabu gets ran over by a truck. Like I have my hate. Okay, like don't don't get it twisted. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm here to share it when it's when it's when it's to be shared. But I also enjoy watching certain people play. Um, Daniel Riviera kind of came back. He said Florida is nowhere near Georgia. That's why who they have to be. No, I totally understand that. Like, what, we we got some work to do. Like, you're not wrong. Um, I think we're making those those steps forward. I, uh, Georgia was in this this spot not too long ago. Let's not let's not forget where where, where they were. Uh, Kirby came in and has done a ton of work to get them where they are. So. This shit takes time. Yeah, I want to say they've what? They're on their fifth or sixth top five recruiting class. And with all that talent, they finally won a national championship with Stetson Bennett. You've had more talent transfer (laughs) at the quarterback position than the one you just won with. It was unbelievable. Their defense was just, it was was really good. And and their running back stable, uh, it's that Cook family gold that just seems to – to propel teams, but uh, I mean, it's it's it, it, it wasn't like it happened overnight. Georgia has been doing this year after year after year. It's gonna work. It's year. a work in progress. It takes time, patience, Absolutely. and that's where Absolutely. Florida fans we've got to get better with. Uh, real quick, Muddy Waters again, hot hot in the mic. This is this one hits close to home. This is one reason why I'm commenting to this, and this is a little shout out, really quick. I want to take a quick second. Uh, what's up with Florida high school quarterbacks? Seems like the state hasn't produced any elite quarterbacks since Tim Tebow. He didn't write that. I ad libbed that at the end there. Uh, but there is there is an elite quarterback up and coming. I have some inside sources from IMG. The kid is an absolute stud. All right. It's my little brother, Cole Walker. All right. So keep your eyes peeled. The kid, the kid, dude, the kid's a beast. He's like the kid's like six one right now. And he's like in ninth grade. The guy's an absolute tank. So dude, he he's he's got the Trevor Lawrence, got the, the locks flowing out the back of the helmet. He's got has had a ton of invites to all these uh these classes and these camps. The kid the kid is good, and I I, I chit chat with him and say hey we got to stay dialed in stay focused. The kid, he more committed than I than I ever was or am, and it's so cool to see it. So muddy waters look it's obviously a little, a little bit down the road, but obviously I got some 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 bias there, but I'm I'm, I'm stoked for him. I think he's gonna do well. So keep your keep your ears peeled in and keep your keep your eyes on on the lookout. Five five star guarantee. Guarantee to your money back. Um, you heard it here first. Let's let's see. We got a lot of going on. Matt yeah, Jones. Matt, yeah, oh, Matt Jones. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I think coming out of high school though, he wasn't high as a as a high recruit. Probably was what he's talking about. You know, kind of like an Arch Manning or like a big deal coming out. Um, I think he was, but not as. I don't think it was exciting. It was like we weren't talking about like a Mac Jones. But yes, he's. Mac, Mac, Mac Jones is quite the man. So let's get into the drama really quick here. Well, let's keep it on a Texas A&M route. So what happened here? This is a Texas. This is Jimbo Fisher rebuttaling to um, what happened with um, Lane Kiffin came out and basically said, uh, "Yeah, if I had, I think Texas A&M went over the luxury cap. If I had a thirty million dollar bag as well, we could do more." Basically saying that Jimbo is paying his guys to come play. Right, like signing them to essentially contracts to sure. to play football, and which I believe, in, if I'm not mistaken, is an old Miss staple as of late. Uh, there was this uh, gentleman named Hugh Freeze that uh, that lost his job for uh, for maybe putting some money in a bag and being a little bit sloppy about it. Uh, but that being said, uh, Ole Miss Lane Kiffin uh, just just sending the bag man straight to your door. Enjoy the money. My gosh, what a recruiting class. But Jimbo thinks there might have been a little something extra to it. So this is where, look, this is where my, my cheer comes for at AM even more because shit's going to be hot this year because he calls out Nick Saban too. So that Bama a and game, which is always a hot one, is going to be even hotter off the stove this year. And the old Miss a and dude, the SEC is going to be the, the shit to watch. The ACC might as well retire, but I, I don't want to go into that anymore. Um, let me go ahead and, and get this. Get this pulled up so you guys can enjoy this video here. Of uh, it's it's a little long, but it's worth every tidbit that you guys are about to get here. 
thoughts out there that Very. it's because a lot of money is being spent and just your thoughts? Here's what I'm going to say, and this is point blank. This is point blank to the – because here, here's, here's my problem. There is no $30 million fund. There is no $5 million. There is no 10 million. This is garbage, okay? And it does. It pisses me off that people – and here it comes from a site called Bro Bible by a guy named Slice Bread. Then everybody runs with it. So it's written on the Internet. It's gospel. How irresponsible is that? You got – I'm going to tell you some of it. There's some very reputable writers in college football and sports that wrote it and have said it and have done things. That's unbelievable to me. There's some, I, when I first heard it, I laughed. I said, oh, yeah, what a clown. I mean, somebody – I didn't even think anything of it because I don't have social media. And it kept building, and lately I've heard more about it. To me, it's insulting to the players that we recruited that that's why they would come here. It's a fair point. It's, you ever it's been to a, a game here? Line. Hell of a line. You ever come to school here and see the education? You ever talk about the 12th man, the Aggie Network, when you're done? There ain't a better university in this country. Bro, this shit haven't really It's insulting <laughs> to what you say. <laughs> Sign All me these, up, coach. And we got writers who, who have said it and done it off sliced bread. A guy named Slice who made it up. Love to see who sliced bread is and put it out there with sliced bread. Let me find out where it comes from. Bro, he's coming to And then to have coaches in our league and across this league to say it, clown acts. All right? Clown Irresponsible acts. as hell. Multiple coaches in our league. And the guy's down. griping about NIL, griping about transfer portal, using it the most and bragging about it the most. I can't wait for the shirts. That's the ironic part. I can't wait for the shirts. You want character? I'll, trust, I'll take it with any of y'all. It's a joke. It does piss me off. The other thing. I love he goes with the glasses on and he's going to stop. You look. Because he's got points Vice to make. president. I get another one. Vice president of Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, I get another one. <laughs> That'll be a reputable university, right? He was That's ready for the question, a reputable bro. university. Ready. I'd be real proud if I hired that guy. Read it off sliced bread. Jimbo spiced, bro. They, they say it because it's written on the internet. That's Johnny Walker. We worry about the kids and social media and internet. How about grown-ups? How about the guys that are supposed to be setting an example? How about writers who are supposed to be writing the right thing? How about coaches who are supposed to be doing the right thing? And I'll tell you what, I know how some of those guys recruit too. Don't dig into that. <laughs> I know the history. I know the tradition. Well, I know, and I'm I know here, things. I'm here for Trust every, me, you every don't want to go down that avenue. Shit. <laughs> it's ridiculous, and it's irresponsible, and it's unbelievable. I ain't just talking about one. Multiple people got NIL issues. It's funny, when Nick Saban said his quarterback got an $800,000 deal, it was wonderful. Now it ain't wonderful no more, huh? <laughs> well, ours, ours, we ain't got that. Ours are on record what comes up. We ain't doing all them big deals. There ain't none on our place that we know of. I, bro, I fucking love it. <laughs> I, 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 dude, dude, that line, the, the, the couple of lines that I love there. So his, his, his line about... When Nick Saban did it, nobody cared. Dude, I when when that came out, when they said, up, we talked home. about it. We do. I was like, yo, that's fucking awesome. Like, it's just working out. Quinn Ewers gets a bag, gets a million dollar bag just to go to Ohio State to fuck around for a year. We didn't loved even it. play. Didn't even play. Well, we're we're here for it. The kid, the kid from Bama hasn't even played yet. Got a, a million dollar bag. We're like, yes, dude. What a fucking line. He's getting a little flack from this. It, I look. I here's what I love about it. It's bringing back the spice. The shit we were just talking about, about where the the college football's gone, this is going to fire some shit up. It's going to piss some people off. It's going to stir up the bag a little bit. This is what's made UCF, or um, UCF, the, like fighting, right? Like with Conor McGregor, the shit talking. We need that. I hate, look, it, it's fine to be cordial, and I can say, like, look, you got to be respectful. I, I get all that, but this, this shit's fun, dude. We got to have more of this. Coaches need to be a little bit more vocal to stand up for their kids. Like, bro, if you if we're concerned about players leaving now, they're locked the fuck in. If I'm con- if, if, as far as oh, I'm concerned, you're fighting for something now. And look, I mean, if you think about it, like college football coaches have never had the candor that the NFL coaches had, and that's what just made the rivalry even worse. Sure, you can't spell citrus without UT. Uh, you know, <laughs> you, you know they, the, the school down south, as uh, or you know, as Michigan and Ohio State would refer to one another. I mean, there's just been so many references to the schools hating each other, and they hate each other. That uh, that it just made the next game and just the rivalry so much more passionate, and that's what drives the fans to it. That's what. Sure. But. We've gotten away from that. Everything is coach speak. Well, you know, they're a great team and they're well coached and they got a lot of talent and they're going to do this well and they've done this really well. Oh, get out of my face. Jimbo Fisher, have yourself another glass of Johnny Walker Fuck. Green. Yes, sir. Just go ahead and get going and just, see, just, just call up a pair of clown shoes. You're a pair of clown shoes. You're a pair of clown shoes. Clown shoes, clown shoes, clown shoes, clown shoes. I'm all out of shoes. 
but you're still clowns. It's amazing. <laughs> Bro, look, I, I I love this little, it's a three minute banger. It's an absolute uh, hot take one for the ages to say the least. Um, I, I loved every bit of it. I, I loved, I loved how he's calling everybody out. He's not holding any punches. He, he had the glasses. He's going through his checklist. He's he's got a kill list, bro. He I'm went watching. back to the, he went back to the list. He had to put his glasses on. Like, hold on, bro. I'm watching I Godfather. Know. I got 4 another here. one. I'm watching Godfather <laughs> Four where we're just hey. I got an alpha. You cannot refuse. Like we're fucking. We're, we're talking. Fucking. We're, 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 we're taking heads here. Uh, look. <laughs> people are going to hate on it. They're going to give Jimbo shit saying he should have had his mouth shut. Jimbo, you do you, boo. I'm here for it. I'm going to be clocked in to that, to that Bama A&M game and that Ole Miss, the powder blue. God, the jerseys are fresh. That powder blue game. I'm the 13th game. man. Uh, they yeah, got the 12th I'll, man. There's 11. They got 12. I'll be I'm the 13th. 13th just to see you. if you can back up your swag, Jimbo. I'll order Let's my go, Johnny baby. Manziel jersey, my signed Johnny Manziel jersey, and I will throw it on for the evening. You can you can count on it. I will, I will be there. All right, ah oh, man, I loved it. Oh yeah, Greg Sheffield has a good one. A free shoes university, baby. That's right. Yeah, um, there's been uh, there's been some ringers in the past. I love it. We got some a more signing day talk. It's a little little off the off going up to the up to up north here. My my man was just in the final four on on the verge of of winning a natty. Took down the big brother, and now he's. He shop. Look at that. <laughs> He's shopping around. It's National Signing Day, and Harbaugh is nowhere to be found. We got no, 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 wait, no. Oh, you're he right. Was somewhere to be found. Yes. It just was not in our Ann Arbor. Just, just not uh, what you not would Michigan. expect. <laughs> you, you got, you got, you got old Billy Napier scaring money don't make money doing his interview. You got Jimbo popping off on the entire SEC, but Love Harbaugh. It. He's over. He he has his own signing day. What's which NFL team should he fuck them kids? <laughs> which NFL team is he gonna coach next? This to me is just absurd. Like, how do you go? How do you go from being possible national championship contenders to saying fuck it? I, I, it it's it's mind boggling to me, to be honest. I mean, look, this is a guy who who tells his own players not to eat chicken because it's, it's a scared animal. It's scared birds. Don't eat it. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that. I, there yes. was a, he, he went to a recruit's house and said, let's, you know, we, we can, we can camp out. Like he was going to camp out like in a tree or something. The guy's out of his mind, but regardless of how out of his mind he was, I can tell you where he was. He was out of Ann Arbor. He was out of Michigan and he was visiting the lovely state Minnesota, um, Minnesota, Minnesota, yeah. Minnesota. Yes. dude. You, uh, he's leaving because I think it's going to get tougher and harder, right? That's I think that's the idea here. We talked about this with Saban leaving. Like, look, it's going to be tough on these coaches, man. Like keeping these guys corralled, keeping them in in the trenches. And I think he sees the right on the wall. But you're going to Minnesota. You got the Packers, the Bears. Oh my! Like what, the line? Well, not the, I mean, the lines, but dude, that ain't no easy division you're walking into, my guy. But I, I mean, I get it. Look, the Vikings got a pretty good squad, but still, like. And again, people are giving him shit for leaving. I think you're going to see that a lot more because containing these kids is going to be damn near impossible. It's and there's a lot of talk today. We, we talked about it too with Jackson State and Dion. I'm like, how how is Dion pulling these kids to to these schools? Right? Well, be careful here. You know. <laughs> but no, but I get it though. I get it. And here's, <laughs> here's here's where there's I can't uh, Eddie George. I think is at uh, God, where is he? Is it Mississippi? Is it? Memphis, it's another small school that he's at as well. And a point was brought up is, look, these guys have connections to the NFL. So the concerns of these kids being able to be, hey, going to the NFL isn't as big as a concern as it maybe as it once was because of who is coaching the team. So these bigger schools that have all this talent flowing in, yeah, could slowly start losing them to these smaller schools with, one, less competition for the kid, but, two, that's still going to have the same that same line to the NFL because of who is there. Yeah, it's, that's it's, true. Uh, and look, and Dion certainly, I mean, gosh, the, the guy was, he was prime time. He did his thing. Um, but it's not like he ever really left the NFL. Or you, could, you could easily say that if you're a, a college football player and you want, you want to get one of the fastest lines from uh, college to the league, hell, Dion, even when he retired from football, was still part of football. He was on you know, 48 different uh, game day shows and, and he's been in, in, you know, in front of different coaches and, and assistant coaches for a long time. I, I, I could see, I could see if there's, you know, these little added benefits, but 
it still just seems out of place. Sure, bro. Money Waters with, with the with the zingers. This is almost like the the chef zingers here. Uh, Harbaugh waiting for the NFL team to throw in a free khakis deal before he bounces. I I, I get that. Ooh, I, f- I, I mean, that. <laughs> I mean, think about the amount of butter he can get from the Land Lakes uh, facility. I mean, there's just there's the 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 the, the bonuses are are boundless here, people. Daniel Riviera sure. is firing off some some things tonight. He says everyone knows this will this was the only year any team could beat Bama. Texas A&M will not be banned this upcoming. I, I disagree. George, George is coming back with a vengeance. They're they're gonna, they're going to be no joke. Uh, Ohio State is is always going to be something to, to to mess with, but I think Texas A&M going to give us some blood. I, I, it's going it's going to look. Who's you, the schedule this year? USC yeah. is going to be good. Don't yo uh, Lincoln Riley out there making some making some moves, my guy. They were on the on the move on the transfer portal. They didn't get a lot of recruits, but they were on the move on the transfer portal. They got the boy Caleb over there. He's got a, the the weakest schedule known to man. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if if we see Lincoln Riley in in in, in the run for uh, a playoff spot. Yeah, Bama should roll this year. I don't think he's too far off base. They got they got Bama's a, gonna a roll, game. but he talked about A and M. I'm not, look, Bama's always gonna roll. Bama's always gonna do Bama. But we're talking about the the, the ins and outs, those, those 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 games in between. It, yeah, it's a look. The A and M, Tennessee, they'll roll. Uh, they Auburn. do have a game against LSU? Texas. LSU Texas in Texas. No, Texas, Texas, Texas did some work too. Texas did some work today yeah. too. They're, they're they're look. They signed some stud. They signed some cl- quiet studs. Yeah, Ole Miss is on the on, on the schedule, and uh, Saban came out as well talking about the NIL and how it's being used for uh, for recruiting, which that's what I kind of thought would happen anyway. I wasn't really sure. That what was the point that was, was the other part where Jimbo was kind of going off of. So yeah, the, the, yeah. the question is, where do we think Florida? Where where do, where are we happy with? Are we happy with a, a five hundred season? Are we happy with above five hundred? Look, man, I'm an optimistic kind of kind of gator bait over here. Utah, that first game is is going to be an absolute banger. I think that game is going to set the tone um, for Florida for sure. We play them, we play them this year and next year, so it's gonna be fun. But Utah, Utah was a was a heavy hitter uh, this year. Uh, then we got Kentucky, and Kentucky has been Kentucky obviously beat us this past year. Kentucky, it's going to be at home. That should be a game we should get back. South Florida, no brainer there. Uh, Tennessee. Tennessee can can kick rocks. Eastern Washington, Missouri. We got uh, Missouri. We got wax, but this game is now back in Florida. I like that game. LSU. I want to wear that ass out. Brian Kelly and his molest molesting his football players and dancing on his players needs to go. I can't. I can't stand. So going back to the hate, I can't stand LSU. I, I also support some people. Screw LSU and Brian Kelly. I, I can't stand though that that team, yeah. their fans, the coaches. Anything, the colors, like anything and everything. I respect the stadium and the noise, but after that, then kick rocks. Yeah, let's, let's not forget that Brian Kelly was the guy who insisted upon putting one of his assistants up in one of those, uh, uh, not a scaffold, but like a scissor lift to film a, a practice that they shouldn't have been doing because there was a weather uh, issue and it, it collapsed and killed the guy. So just for the record, uh, Brian Kelly, uh, you, uh, you're an asshole. So uh, Greg made a good point too. Even Florida kept it close with Bama with a Grant Grantham defense. That's like playing with four guys instead of eleven. <laughs> and look, that's a <laughs> solid point. Like, and again, Bama Bama obviously shows out. They always show out. But I, I don't. I think we all knew that Georgia was going to pull off the the W this year. They just looked better. They looked more pristine. But Nick finds ways to win. We got a new newbie here, Clint Hound. It's all about the U. That's cute. <laughs> Wait, okay. That, look, hey, if the U's playing FSU, baby, I'm throwing it up, big dog. I'm here for you. <laughs> they playing Clemson? What's up? <laughs> well, well, last year. I, I, hey, hey. hey, um, hey. So, look, let's look over this real quick. Florida, really quick, their schedule. The Utah game, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say L. <laughs> That's going to be tough. If Utah kind of carry whatever they did last, last Last year, and I'm I'm being I'm being modest here. It's not what I want, obviously, but I'm being I'm honest. So that's 0 and 1. I think Kentucky's a W. South Florida, Tennessee. So one, two, three, four. We're four and one right now, as far as I'm concerned. Missouri. I'm gonna I'm gonna give us. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say yes. Five and one. 
I'm gonna say yes because I'm not gonna give LSU. So we're six and one, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six and one. Well, Georgia. Tennessee is a guarantee until Tennessee can until Tennessee can beat you. I just don't. I don't. Yeah, see that's how I look. That's how I look at Tennessee. Georgia, no, six and two. Texas A&M, no, six and three. South Carolina, horrible loss. It's Texas in- A&M, no, six and. You, you, so you you're, you're taking losing. the L against Texas? Okay, okay. We're okay. losing. Yeah. Uh, South Carolina, I say yes, it's in Gainesville. We got a huge, we got a heavy home game s- schedule, which we're going to try to be at these games and, and be, be filming. So this is going to be a great year for us. Uh, Vanderbilt, absolutely. And Florida State, duh. So, look, we could have a pretty decent yeah. decent. Oh, you guys season. really ran away with that last year. <laughs> Uh, we could we could, look. It's not it's not that hard of a schedule. Um, I think no. LSU is, is 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 beatable. Obviously Tennessee. We lost to the Kentucky last year. Um, we lost to South Carolina. We lost some bad games last year that we shouldn't have lost to. So I think those those are what's going to be the the difference maker on us being a positive five hundred or below five hundred. Um, Daniel asked about the USC. Uh, hell of a schedule. You, you ready for this? This schedule is an absolute joke. The I did take a glance. It's, it, this is this is pretty bad. I'm not the, gonna lie. The Rice Owls, I heard they're pretty good. Stanford, Stanford's look. That's kind of like it's it's in in in, in conference game. That's always gonna be a tough one. But I don't. There's no reason they should lose it to Stanford. Fresno State Bulldogs. Not I not mean, the in not their the West Coast. They play not them the all Bulldogs. The uh, Oregon the State Fresno Beavers. State no, they haven't really been anything. Arizona State, mm-hmm. Arizona State Sun Devils. No. They got a little fight in them. They got a little fight in them. They had a decent year. They got okay. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Uh, Washington State Cougars. They're not. They're not anything without Minshew. Uh, they're playing Utah. So I, I full respect on Utah. Utah is 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 kind of finding their way. Arizona Wildcats. I'll give them that game. They're pretty good. California Golden Bears. It, it's whatever Man. year they want to play good. Colorado. No. UCLA. It's going to be a good game. And Notre Dame. That's obviously going to be a great game. But Notre Dame's in a weird stage right now. They love their coach. Um, the kids that are there, so I think they're going to have some momentum that they're going to be riding with, and I'm sure this game is going to be a deciding factor for both teams. So this is going to be a great week for college football. Speaking of this week, which is November 26th. It feels odd that USC is finishing their their season with Notre Dame instead of UCLA. Like, UCLA is usually the last game of the year for them. Yeah, Because they I always think, play in both of their colors. I know, but I think what could be happening, I mean, look, because Notre Dame, is that's going to be that's gonna be a big game. I think they understand no, sure. what, sure. what, that, what that holds for them. Um, so I think that that's going to be huge for them. Now that game is on a Saturday, which is rivalry weekend. And something we wanted to talk about is Florida, Florida state move their game to black Friday. Yeah. Which, Friday. I don't know. How, I don't know how to feel about it, to be honest with you. I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, I, I, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't you know. know I don't know how to feel. It was, it, we were get, it was, it was guaranteed a primetime slot. There's only a couple of games that day. I want to say LSU and Arkansas always play on that Friday. Um, but that could easily be an eight o'clock kickoff um, that that you know just puts both teams kind of on the on the map. And look, we're both not coming off our best year, so to have the opportunity to play uh, on a on a, a scale where there's not a lot of competition and not a lot of opportunity for people to put their eyes somewhere else, I'll take it. Yeah, I think. So that's what that kind of the talk is, right? It's Friday. It's kind of it's it's a day where they're not competing with other schools. So that's going to be cool. If they're going to have their own day, I love waking up Saturday morning after eating a bunch of turkey, right? Because Friday's Black Friday. Obviously, you kind of get your shopping done. So it's kind of to me, like, it's a little a little sad. I honestly, I like that it's on Saturday. I'm 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 a I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guy for uh, keeping it old fashioned. Um, so I, I think I'll have more of an opinion about it. I, as of now, though, I'm kind of I'm not I'm not a huge fan. I'm not stoked about it. I'm really not. I don't think it's yeah. Well, it just it takes away something that we've all been used to our entire lives. Like Florida, Florida State on on Saturday, it just is what it is. And how good both teams were determined when they played this year. It was a noon game. It could have been a nine thirty game for how bad both teams were. No, bro, <laughs> muddy, nobody would have been surprised. Muddy Waters is tapped into our brains. This sounds like you, bro. He says, "Can't wait for those two a.m. Pac twelve games." What do you say all the time? Can't wait to turn uh, on the, the the West Coast games to fall asleep to. That's that's, yeah, that's those, Steven's line right there. Those are my sleepy. That that's how you fall asleep right there. You've been watching since noon, right? If you want to get in on the pregame shows, you've been watching since about ten or eleven. The noon games come on. It rolls into the three thirty games. You uh you you you've got that little break between the three thirty games and the seven seven forty five kickoffs. You got to watch those. And then you move into uh, you move into the Pac-12. You uh, you stroll into the bedroom. You kick the TV on, 
you, uh, you, you get the fan on high and uh, you kind of put the day behind you, but you damn for sure fall asleep watching you know, Oregon and whoever the hell else out there you don't care about. It's, it's, it's just, it's just the perfect way to fall asleep. It's a, sure. it's a nightcap on a, on a great day of football. And it was, that's, it's just the sleepy night games. It's the best that's, way to that's, do it. That's Steve's feels right there. Um, that's it. We've that's talked right. about this. this Daniel Riviera, Lincoln Riley was smart because he knew he couldn't beat any of the big names in the SEC when he was at Oklahoma. So he left because they, they might move Oklahoma to the SEC West. And we talked about that and I could not agree more. Um, he's moved out west to 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 get away from the recruiting competition, but also to, like you said, not having to deal with that competition. We just pulled up the schedule. The schedule is an absolute joke. Um, and again, the guy gets to coast through and then really focus on the playoffs. I think that was the play here. I mean, look, genius move. The guy's going to get paid. He's going to be a hero. Back to being excited about football, I'm excited to see, to see USC back up there again. It's been a long time. And we got a question here from Muddy Waters. Who's your Cinderella team? He has Coastal Carolina. My, I have two teams. And again, they might you might not consider them Cinderellas, but it's been a while since they've been relevant. Mine's going to be Oregon. Oregon. I think Oregon's going to be a good team this year. And I'm going to say USC. USC, can, to me, is considered can be considered a Cinderella because of how long it's been since they've been really relevant. And I think they're yeah. going to make a huge run. Again, it's not quite like Muddy Waters here, but I like I like I like them to be a uh, uh, an up and coming team that I don't think we're really expecting to see. <clears throat> Look, I'm going to go with uh, with a team that has the name recognition, but not in any generation. A lot of these folks have, have been alive in Nebraska. Nebraska seems like they've got Ooh. a little something going here. We they've talk, got a, they've got what a, we say? Yeah. Last year, yeah, they, they they've the got a couple of transfers. Best team yeah. of all time. I like they the missed, pick, Steve. They missed, they missed every game by just a little bit, and they got a couple of quarterback transfers. They didn't have the greatest recruiting class, but they're a team that has to live in the transfer portal because there's just not enough talent around them to keep up with the Florida, Georgia, Alabama, California, Texas teams, those those uh, those areas that are just saturated with talent, but they do they did well in the uh, in the transfer portal. So I think uh, I think we can see a, finally a Scott Frost transitional uh, success that people thought was going to happen much long much longer ago when he when he left uh, UCF. Sure, absolutely. We got a comment from Amoya Wilder here. Billy Napier will have to. Be, he's got the A hat on. What's up? Go Braves, baby. Chop on. Uh, we'll have to beat Brian Kelly at LSU, Saban at Bama, and Kirby at Georgia all in the same year for the most part to ever get an SEC natty again. And he's he's not wrong. Look, it's it's going to be tough for Billy. I mean, these all these teams that he just mentioned, and Texas a and is going to be in, in the loop too, is, dude, my God. It's it's only going to get tougher, dude. These these with, with NIL money coming in, I don't see these guys, any of these teams being bad. For, for and not time. to mention that Texas will be in the SEC. If we if we're going to start talking about NIL money, I don't think anybody Man. can keep up with Texas. Let's that's be the, honest. That's, that's that, oil uh, money. That's that oil money, baby. That's that old. That's that good boy money. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they they, they made a whole uh, like 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 soap opera about it, like dynasty. Like that's all everybody did was run around in cowboy hats and talk about how much money they had. Okay. Texas, Texas. Yeah, there you go. Hey, real there quick, real go. quick for Copper Top V. I got you, big dog. I got you. Scared money don't make money, you know. Yes, sir. Scared money don't make money, you know. <laughs> I look, I I love it. I am absolutely here for it, baby. We're 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 vibing. Well, Steve. We're doing it, my man. National signing day was an absolute hit. Thank you to everybody that stopped by. An absolute banger of a show. Your comments were incredible. The energy was awesome. We go live every Wednesday at eight thirty-five. We got to find something for next week because we're running out of juice here with the, with the recruiting news. Well, hopefully, some Arles Boardingham Hill will sign. We'll see where he goes. We'll have a little bit to drag in next week. Let us know what you guys what you guys want to hear. Drop down in the comments. What do you want to hear about? What do you want to hear us two dumbasses talk about? We go back ramble and forth, on about. Be completely ramble. wrong. You tell us we're idiots. That's what we're looking for here. This is your show, folks, not ours. We're here. We just got here. on here like idiots. We want to hear what you guys want to want to hear about. So we're here for it. Thank you to all the subscribers. Keep on subscribing. Keep on smashing the like button if you're liking what you're doing. Turn on that bell so you know when we go live, so you can so you can chime in and uh, be like Muddy Waters and, and tell us when we're wrong and when we're right. We absolutely love it, guys. Thanks again for stopping by. Scare money don't make money. And until next week, I'm Shelton. And I'm Holly. Boogity, 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 baby. Go Gators. Ow!